A former teacher from East London is gearing up to cross the Atlantic Ocean for a second time. Rower Peter van Ketz um, is firmly on track to set a new world record as the first person to cross the Atlantic Ocean twice in the Woodvale Atlantic Rowing Challenge. The first person to cross twice and win. He'll be the first South African, first African and first person in the world to attempt it. Peter van Ketz joins me now. Good morning. Good morning, man. That's a weighty challenge. I mean, if you do it the second time, you become the yeah. only man on the planet to have accomplished such a huge feat. How are you feeling about it? Oh, well, I'm, I'm very excited at the moment. Uh, it's not far to go now. I've got four weeks to go uh, to the start of the race. So um, it's just around the corner. Now, what goes into the preparation? How much time have we got? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. There's lots of preparation. Yeah, I mean, the aerobic version. Look, basically, the three the three areas that, that I need to prepare myself. The first one is uh, physically, um, then psychologically, mentally, obviously, and then uh, food. I have to eat the right amount of food. I'm got to pick up. I mean, now I'm going to be out at sea between uh, 50 and 120 days, and so um, I need to obviously start the race a little bit with a little bit of excess weight and um, spa have been helping me uh, try to get up to the weight that i need to it's 92 kilograms i'm on 88.5 kilograms at the moment so because you expected to lose 15 kilograms during the roughly oh. 15 k kilograms during the course of this Is in the 2007-2008 right? race um i lost 14 kilos oh, now i'm word. doing and in that race i did with a very good friend of mine bill godfrey uh we did the pairs race we actually won that race um, this time I'm going solo with the help of Liberty. They, they are my big sort of backer for this race. And uh, so I'm going solo this time. And I expect to take a little bit longer than, the, than pairs. So I should be uh, losing more than 14 kilos. I'm prepared to lose about 18, but uh, that's it. You're I mean, you're not flying solo, you're rowing solo. I mean, mm. what kind of backup systems going on? your emergency backstop? Should something go wrong? We hope it doesn't, but should it go wrong? Okay, man, first, I need to just uh, tell the viewers that um, this is a completely unsupported race, which means that I'm not allowed to accept any help from any outside source whatsoever. Oh my so word. I've got to take all my food, water, whatever I need uh, for the entire duration of the race. So um, as far as contact with um, uh, friends or family uh, is, is concerned, I have a sat phone. In fact, this time I have two in the last race. Our sat phone broke 10 days before the finish, which was a bit of a thing. And uh, so I've got a satellite telephone for emergencies. If that doesn't work, I've got an um, EPIRB, which is an emergency positioning indicator radio beacon, which sends an SOS signal um, to all marine rescue service centers around the world. Now they'll actually coordinate um, a rescue. I mean, it is grueling. I'm just I'm reading some of the, 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 mm. the well, I'm reading the press release. Uh, yeah. A, it's 5,500 kilometers. That is... <laughs> Our no. GPS read 5,438 kilometers after the last race. So <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not a short distance. But no. also some of the things you can expect are pressure sores on your behind, yes, sleep nice. deprivation, delirium. Yes. These are just some of the physical and psychological yes. battles yes. that you are going to be up against. Look, I'll be rowing an hour and a half on with an hour and a half off 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the entire duration of the race. I have to laugh. Him. And sometimes people say to me, so what do you do at night? Do you throw out an anchor? No, <laughs> it's five <laughs> kilometers deep. I don't have enough space on the boat for and five kilometers of rope. Yes, it would take me about eight hours to pull five kilometers of rope up. So, yeah, so I, I row basically 24 hours um, a day with an hour and a half rest every hour and a half. When you listen to the sheer scope of preparation, mm. psychologically and physically, mm. and, and the kind of feat that you're actually attempting to yeah. achieve, it is, it, is, it is amazing. Why are you doing this? <laughs> well, uh, I'd like to answer that on three different levels. First of all, is a personal level. It's the um, it's, it's what I do. It's my way of making sure that in life I take ownership of my life. Um, it's uh, on a sort of secondary level. I've seen what happens or the, the things that have happened around this race. Often people say to me, so Pete, like, why the race? I say it's not actually about the race. It's about the little stories that happen because of the race. Uh, and the build-up to the rest, the little stories that happen there. Um, and I spend a lot of my time talking about um, what I do to prepare myself um, for the race and what I call critical success factors and achieving success um, in the things that I do. Well, we wish you, I mean, everything of the best, certainly heartfelt. What does yeah. Hannah, who's your daughter, she's yes. four now, what does she say about all this? Is she worried that Daddy's going far away into the big blue? I think it's a lot better this time. The first race, uh, she was two years old, um, so she didn't quite know what was going on. This time, she's four. Um, obviously, that is my big tug 
uh, for this race. It's the thing that I will find the hardest from her and obviously my wife. Um, but uh, I speak to her about it every single day, and she's very excited. I think she's quite excited about coming to Antigua to see me at That's the end good. of the race. We wish you all the best. Go well, man. Go well. Thank we you, look forward you. to you setting that record yes. and doing like it twice. I would like to tell the yeah? viewers that if they'd like to follow me, um, they must go onto a website, www.own-your-life.co.za, yeah. and they can actually follow my progress. Uh, it's updated. That website will be updated every three hours. Fantastic. We'll, mm. we'll, we'll be dipping in. We expect you back here for an interview. <laughs> I will that was be. Uh, South African rower Peter Van Kitts, my father. Well, earn your life. So go out there and find your feet. Let's take a quick look at what's happening on our top story this morning. Police had to use stun grenades in the early hours of the morning to end a tense standoff and free three hostages being held by prisoners near Bloemfontein. Fourteen hours of negotiations failed at the Mangaung prison. After ten prisoners held three prison workers in the high security section of the prison. Mystery surrounds the shooting of a taxi driver whose runaway vehicle plowed into shoppers at a busy Durban shop. The taxi driver collapsed and died of gunshot wounds shortly after crashing through the window of an Edgar storm. Paramedics say 13 people were injured and that included three. That included store employees as well as shoppers. Cross-examination of Vene Giotti has finally come to an end. Jackie Salibi's defense team wrapped it up yesterday after honing in on Egliotti's credibility. Egliotti is the state's star witness in the former National Police Commissioner's corruption trial. Up next, the latest from the Weather Desk.